ladies and gentlemen, just before we start another episode of the Fitz Academy podcast, just remind up for those who are listening on YouTube that we are now on Spotify. So please head down into the link in the description and check us out there. On with the episode. They're going to Bristol, they're going to Swansea, they're going to here, there and everywhere. You know, they was part of every single journey, the Blackburn. You know, he drove me to Blackburn. And, you know, I think now is just about really proving him right. And I think that's probably on my journey where now I do everything with him and for him. You have to believe in yourself. I don't think, I think in everything in life that you do, whether it's football, another sport, rugby, cricket, I think the main thing is believing in yourself because one man's opinion can't make your future. And that's, that's a fact because as TJ said in his and I know a lot of other players in Jib will probably have been told they're not the level or they're not good enough for this. But that's just someone's opinion, and I think you've got to take it with a pinch of salt and keep working on yourself. And I think you'll get to where you want to be one day with that. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the interruption again, but just a reminder that we're now looking for podcast episode sponsors. So as we are progressing, we're just starting to get bigger guests on, and the guests are incredible. So if you want to advertise your business or you know someone who does want to advertise their business, please do get in touch with us. The email is always down in the link in the description, and we can always sort something out. On with the episode. <laughs> Welcome everyone to episode 31 of the Fitness Academy podcast. I am buzzing for this one. Uh, I've been wanting to have Louis on for an absolute million amount of time now. Um, so really, really glad he's come on. Uh, Lou, firstly, thanks for coming on, mate. No worries at all. Yeah, sorry, I've obviously taken a while to get on with uh, various things that's been going on, but uh, looking forward to it. It's all right. I think I can accept him. I think you can, I think I can accept him. It's all right. You're here now. It's, you're here now. It's, uh, had a few more important things. Playing professional football is all right. I'll, I'll get over it. Anyway, so uh, I don't know if you've watched any episodes, Lou, but I'm going to stitch you up straight away, and I'm going to go in with a quick icebreaker question. Okay, everyone knows that footballers are famous for their for their little little uh, wash bags, little man bags, whichever you want to call them. Okay, so if you can, I can only break that down to one essential that you can take into that bag. Okay, you can't use your phone because that's a bit boring. Let's get a bit creative with it. Only take one thing in the One thing. Probably go after shave. After shave. Because it's good. you can't beat spelling. Do you know what I mean? It's the first thing people get when you walk past. Football, you're always sweating. Probably go after shave, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Smell good before and after, mate. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. He's thought about that one well as well, so that's perfect. So, cool. Starting us off, Lou. Um, obviously, I'm aware of, of your journey. Obviously, uh, apart from the various amounts of research that I've done without sounding very bizarre. Um... So, can you just give, obviously, our listeners a little bit of a, a sort of a run through of, of Louis Annesley, um across sort of a course until he's today? Obviously, one, probably should have started with this. Obviously, um, Blackburn Rovers and Gibraltar international football player as well. So, I should have started with that. Nice one, James. Good start. Um, so, can you just give us a little bit of a run through as to your journey, mate? Yeah. So, obviously, I started obviously at about ten, eleven, twelve at the grassroots, and then. Went into Chelsea development ranks at about 13, 12, 13, and had a couple years there. Um, then really went back to Sunday League, just enjoyed my football with my friends and yeah, just enjoyed football really until about 16. Then it started to get a bit more serious when I went into men's football with um, Cobham FC, which was my first uh, journey. And then, yeah, 17, I played for the national team, made my debut then. And from there really was when it started to get, I suppose, surreal and Serious, I suppose. Nice. So obviously, the everyone sees the the current picture or current place where a player is in their moment in time. It's, it's a difficult journey, and and you've definitely had your fair share of, of difficult moments. For, for me, I'm interested about the time when you came to Gibraltar because obviously we're going to get into it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, in a bit. Um, but obviously. You play for the national team, and a lot of maybe locals will be wondering, oh, he's got a little bit of a different accent without sounding any offence. Uh, without any offence, um, but you obviously you've got a hell of a lot of Gibraltar blood in you because um, an interesting fact as well about you: you're actually the only player till this date, and and will be for a little bit probably the only player who's ever played from 16s all the way to the first team, which is which I thought was was really interesting here. Yeah? So obviously that's one a little bit more of a little bit sneak peek behind it. How was it? for you sort of coming back to Gibraltar after playing in the UK for a bit, playing obviously for Lincoln Redips, and I think you had a little loan spell with Lynx, was it, I think it was? 
Uh, I don't think I ever actually, in the end, got to the Lynx loan. Okay. I think it was probably talked about, yeah, because obviously okay. I wasn't playing as much as I would have liked when I came over to Lincoln. But um, I, st- I don't know how many games I played for Lincoln in the end, but obviously I was there for about four or five months, I think, over in Gibraltar. But obviously when I was a child, when I was a kid, I used to go every summer to Gibraltar. So I had, um, as yeah, as you said, I have a lot of family over there. So when I did move over there, it wasn't, I mean, it was a challenge because I moved away from everything I knew. But it wasn't a challenge because it was also home. But it was obviously a very different type of home because I didn't have my my mum, my dad, my sisters, you know. And then I was also living in Spain, which was another challenge. But uh, all these challenges have led me to where I am today and probably helped me along the way, you know, without even, they're like blessings in disguise, I suppose. And and obviously to this day, playing sort of uh, the, the other day, which was obviously the 20, not 8, so it was the 23rd of August. Obviously, this will go out uh, a couple of weeks after. Made your first team debut for Blackburn Rovers, which was unbelievable to to see. How how did obviously that move to Blackburn come about? Because obviously it went into the academy playing 21s and then sort of transversed obviously the sort of back in towards last season into this season, sort of transitioning into the first team. How did that come about? So yeah, obviously when I was over in Lincoln Redham, so I was still playing for the national team, and um, we had a t- we had a trip away. I think it was Macedonia away, and it was my might be my third cap maybe. Um, but I didn't know at the time, but they were monitoring and having a look and they watched that game and I, I, I had a decent game. I wouldn't say it was one of my best games, but you know they watched that and they decided to get in contact to see if they could get me in for a trial. So uh, I went over for two weeks and yeah, lucky me, I suppose. They must have liked what they saw. Um, I'd had my fair share of trials. I think I'd had 12, 12 professional trials from the age of 16 to 18 and all, all told me no. Um and this was probably the one I was most relaxed for and went in and I didn't really, I'd probably say out of, the, out of the 13 I had, from 1 to 13, I'd probably say it was in the middle somewhere. But, you know, that's, I suppose, life works in weird ways and the you nose know, put me to where I am today. Look, that's, that's unbelievable for you to say because I didn't actually know that. And for me, it, it, it brought a smile to my face. It might sound a bit weird, but it did because obviously I, seeing where you are now and seeing where someone like TJ is now, when, when I had TJ on, TJ's podcast is by far my most popular podcast I've ever had. And, and his small clip that I did on Instagram spoke about him sort of being rejected. I think it was 14 times or something along those lines before he actually got um, his professional contract, which is it's unbelievable to, how coincidental that is. But, but it makes you into a, a better player when you actually do settle down, no, I suppose? Yeah, definitely. I think those, you know, those no's. And that's the other thing that people obviously don't aren't as open to talk about the no's because everyone wants to talk about the yeses and the, the, the congratulations and the, everyone wants to talk about their milestones. But really and truly, what makes you into those milestones and those successes is your failures. And failure is obviously one of those cringy sayings, but failures, they make you into the, they make the best successes, don't they? So, um, you know, all those things when I told no, whether I agreed with it or not, they turned me into a better player because you learn from them and you have to take it on board. Otherwise, you're not going to get better. Was that like sort of an immediate thought for you? Or did it take a while to develop that sort of progressive mindset? Well, okay, it's a no now, but, you know, pro- progress on to the next one? Or was it immediately and, and you could snap out of it? I think because of the people I had around me, my family, they always helped me and they always believed in me and always told me, you know, that I am good enough and made me almost believe in myself that I have to believe in myself when no one else does. Um, that those no's got swept on. In the back of your head, they're always there. But they got swept under the carpet pretty quickly. And I knew that I was good enough. And I knew that, you know, I, weren't, I wasn't getting these trials because I wasn't good enough. You know, there's still that element of, I know I'm good. And almost if they say no, you'll see. That's always what I've been taught, you know, to let them know you'll see. And I think at the minute, you know, I've had some bad days, but at the minute I'm trying to make sure those people know that they'll see hopefully in the future when I'm playing at the highest level. That's the that's the beautiful thing, isn't it? Proving sort of yourself right. Well, you don't need to prove yourself right because you know, you, like you said, your support system around you sort of sh- believed in you so you probably didn't need to prove yourself right but prove the others wrong isn't it in yeah. that sense yeah exactly that perfect so on on to the next bit because this is the bit which i found most interesting about you because uh everyone speaks about a lone move and a lone move into i don't know from a premier league into a championship club where it's it's still televised and 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 it's sort of maybe not glamorized because obviously championships are a very very difficult league as you can probably tell us but your loan to Woking was, was quite an interesting one because it was very close to home, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, probably too close to home. Um, <laughs> it was a seven-minute drive from home to the training ground, so it was it was probably the closest club, bar Fulham, to my house. 
um, I listen, I really enjoyed it. You know, people don't like the, um, like you said then, obviously from the Championship to the National League, it's a three-league drop. Um, and people would be, I'd say, not scared, but, you know, a bit hesitant to do that. Um, but no, I jumped at it. I jumped at it and I, I wanted it. And when I went there, you know, the beginning of my loan spell was unreal. And I think it's taken me a long way, a very long way. And it's going to help me this transfer window as well, which I'm really looking forward to. Well, it's it's interesting because obviously the the way that I sort of see it myself from from an outside perspective is that the people in in sort of national league who are trying to get into football league are probably a hell of a lot more eager, I think, than obviously the yeah. people who possibly are already in the league anyway. No, yeah, definitely. I think you know the the motivation to get into the league is is unbelievable. But also now you know the money in the national league is there's also more money in the national league than league two at the moment. So the players playing in the National League are becoming frightening now, really, the level in that league and how good that league is becoming. It's so close to being League Two level now that it's, um, you know, it's a very good league. And and how important was, was the loan, sort of maybe regardless of, of where the loan was to, how important is the loan system? Because obviously a lot of people see, right, it's it's important for, for young players to go out and play football. Is it literally that black and white? I think everyone's different. I think everyone has a different mindset. My mindset was always that, I need to go and play men's football last season. You know, it was never a doubt in my head. I wasn't staying to play under 23s. Um, people would, as I said before, people would be hesitant because it's a lot lower down than people would want from being from Blackburn Rovers. But as I said before, when I found out the interest, I said, get me, I need to play games. I want to go play games. And I loved every second of it, to be honest. And and I, and I found this out, obviously, doing a little bit more research into sort of interviews you had done as well. It's you almost, and I can't remember the exact video that it was, but I remember you saying that you almost gave up on a on a loan at one stage, um, and then obviously Woking came calling. Can you give us a bit more sort of insight into that? Yeah, so obviously I'd missed the um, window for, as I said, obviously everyone's gagging for a loan to the League Two, yeah. League One, and I almost missed out on the window. Well, I did miss out on the window, and then I kind of wrapped my head around the thought of I'm going to smash the next six months with the 23s and get a loan in Jan, in January. So I thought, right. I need to get my head down. I was playing under 23s, obviously. My head was a bit scrambled that I'd missed the deadline to go out on loan to the league. And then one day I came in from training and it was as quick as this. I came in, I had a phone call saying, Woking want you to go down tomorrow, which was a, a Friday, and play on the Saturday. So I spoke to the Woking gaffer. He said, we've been interested in you for a few months. Can you get down by the morning? I said, of course I can. It's right by my house, blah, blah, blah. I said, see you tomorrow. So I spoke to Blackburn, got the okay. And within two hours, I'd gone from training at 10.30 to half 12, being back down on the motorway to London. And started on a Saturday, played one, and then that was it really till the end of the season. It was crazy, <laughs> but that's how it works, I suppose, sometimes. Yeah, and obviously in non-league, it gets sort of, they're quite short loans and then they get extended. So yours got extended a few times, because obviously you, you, you're doing all right, no? Yeah, so obviously I had an initial month. Then had another month, and then in January, which is when I was gonna, I had a lot few interests from the loan uh, from the league, sorry. But then I thought I was playing at Woking, so you know I didn't want to go back and then have the same problem as before. And I was really enjoying it, so I decided to stay till the end of the season. And what for you was? Do you almost take lessons out of the loan, or was it a case of? It was just minutes under your belt and like you said, playing men's football. Or can you kind? Did you give yourself almost like targets to hit because? I know that I, I need to sort of set myself some goals before I sort of set out to achieve something. If not, it's almost like trying to sort of throw a massive rock into a water and hope it floats. No, no, definitely. I mean, I set I set targets at the beginning of every season. Um, last season's probably had to change and probably did get changed. It was 40 league games, but obviously I didn't go into the league. So then when I went to Woken, I actually set myself a target of hitting 30 appearances, which again was pretty high because I think I was only available for... 36 maybe so it was giving myself of a target of playing 30 out of 36 I didn't hit I think I hit 22 out of 36 so I was a bit short which was a bit gutting but you know there was variables that I couldn't affect um so I wasn't too harsh on myself but again these these lessons that I might not hit the targets but it makes me even more hungry to hit the next target I set and know that I haven't hit that and then yeah the next target I hit I have to hit that's how I just you know one step backwards equals three steps forwards in my eyes mm. Are you always like sort of in the moment rather than sort of too far ahead? Because obviously, like like you said, things change within a matter of a phone call and then you're back down the motorway. Literally. As you said then, like, yeah, you can't, I, I think you have to live in the present. 
I think you can plan and I think you can set targets for the future. I think that's really good because obviously that's goal setting and that's positive thinking, positive mindset. But for me, I mean, I had to I had to live in the moment every day because you, in football, especially your Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, I can't be looking at, oh, we've got, uh, just give you an example, we've got Portsmouth in three weeks on Saturday. I've got to prepare myself for that. No, I've got to prepare myself for tomorrow and then be right for the next day and then for Saturday. And then I think that's how it goes in the football world. Especially because trade, like sort of, I, I imagine obviously how how your sort of your call up to first team uh, squad came about, where sort of probably trained very very well. They would probably obviously seen that you've done right at, Ro- at Woking, obviously with Gibraltar as well. And you have to be prepared to sort of potentially play, not play, maybe move down or sort of move up. It's it's quite sort of changing, and 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 that was sort of one thing which I I wanted to ask you was, does it? Does your mindset change different to first team or 23s or playing for Woking? Yeah, I think so. I think you've said it there. I think um, 100% obviously when you're playing with or training with the Blackburn first team, it's very, very different to training with the under 21s or the Gibraltar national team. I think, um, you know, the level at Rovers training is very high intensity. Uh, the new gap, the new manager that's come in, he's installing that in everyone that he wants them to be at highest intensity. Then you've got Gibraltar, obviously, which again is in the games very much higher. Training is very high intensity, like probably on par with Rovers. And then 21s, you know, it probably drops down a level just due to the fact that obviously everyone's learning and younger and trying to trying to get to the level of the first team. Um, and when you're playing 21s, I think it's just about, you know, you've got to be in the mindset of you've got to win, even though it's for development and, you know, results probably don't matter, performances do. But I think as a footballer, you've got to, win, you've got to want to win every game. And that and that, that that's one thing which I had just thought of was the similar to what we spoke about the the guys coming in from national league to to the league is probably very similar to twenty threes or, or now sorry, now twenty ones coming into to, coming to the first team because you see it sort of one one of the guys you obviously train is quite frequently I'm a big fan of Tyler Morton came out of nowhere playing came into Liverpool squads made his Prem and Championship Champions League debut within the space of a week and then sort of. He had to adjust to that and then obviously move back down occasionally. Does it always sort of, is that something that you're always pushing towards sort of first team? I know you obviously say, right, you know, we think about the Tuesday and then the Saturday rather than sort of three weeks time. Is that always next training session? I know obviously I've alluded to it a little bit already, but a bit more in detail now, which I think this is really, really good, good stuff. This so I'm, I'm delving in as much as I can. <laughs> I think I think so. Yeah, I think I'm I'm very much. This this is my opinion, by the way. This is everyone will have different thoughts and yeah. feelings on it. But I'm very much a believer of. I'm going to take every day as it comes, but I'm going to attack every day like it's my last. I think that's what I've been installed again through as my family. You know, granddad, mum, uh, everyone around me has installed that in me. You know, that one I've got to enjoy it, and two I've got to work as hard as I can because it can get taken away at any time. Um. And I think that that's what I do. I think that when I'm going into training, I think every day I've got to treat training like it's my last and I've got to obviously give it my all. And because um, I'm very, you know, lucky to be here and um, got, to, got to prove everyone wrong and right. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the interruption again, but just remind that we're now looking for podcast episode sponsors. So as we are progressing, we're just starting to get bigger guests on and the guests are incredible. So if you want to advertise your business or you know someone who does want to advertise their business please do get in touch with us the email is always down in the link in the description and we can always sort something out on with the episode do you do you struggle to enjoy it sometimes i i know i do 110 percent. i'm so focused on on the result or that call that 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 last like ball that i bowled was terrible or that last ball that i faced was awful or that last ball that kicked was awful do you struggle do you struggle sometimes to enjoy it because of the level that you're at or do you always just keep it clear no, definitely. I think anyone who says that they don't sometimes think, what am I doing, is crazy because everyone has that moment. And I think, you know, those moments are key to the next phase of what you do, the next stage of what you do. Um, but as I said, once I clear my head and I've got to remember how fortunate I am to be where I am and um, I'm grateful for the opportunities I'm getting and I can't take them for granted, you know. Is that the process for you, sort of, whether you have a great game or a bad game? Because I think it's, regardless of which, it's probably important to take the positives and negatives away from both because you can have an absolutely outstanding game, but you can always be better, especially at, sort of, academy football, I'm guessing, no? Yeah, I think um, we have a thing here at Blackburn. We always do three good clips, three bad clips after games, you know. Um, 
So that's something that I do even now. I'm not probably one of the classes, one of the 21s. Um, that you know, when I'm watching my games back, I just write down the times of three good things I did uh, and three things I could think I could do better on. And I think that's a good way of learning. I think it's a good way of visually learning. And then, you know, I can go back to those when I do them right and say, well, look, I've done it wrong here. But three weeks later, I've done it well. So I've obviously learned from that mistake and taken it onto this game week. Listen, those things are going to change just due to variables that sometimes you can't handle again, as I said before. But um, I think it's a good learning strategy, which Rovers obviously taught me, but I'll take on with me. And and that's one thing. That's that's another thing which you just mentioned. I keep, I'm, 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 I'm forgetting about my notes here because obviously <laughs> you give me such good info here. Yeah. So for for you, and I've seen it a little bit more sort of closely being a strength and conditioning coach myself, uh, watching you sort of a little bit of a transformation that you managed to do sort of in in sort of the last off season. I, I hate the word off season because the training load increases. But um, for you, is is it sort of improving your body just as much as sort of improving your tactical side? Like you said, with the bad clips, do you then go right? I'm going to do five minutes extra on this bit to make sure that that point doesn't exist anymore. Then it can go into the good column. Well, definitely, I'd probably say that the you know the S and C side of it, the strength and conditioning side of it, was probably my biggest weakness growing up. Um, just because I was so gangly and so long and thin and my body hadn't grown and and to be honest it probably still hasn't fully and I was a bit, little bit like Bambi on ice um, <laughs> and to be honest I probably still am a bit like Bambi on ice um, but you know it's one thing that I've improved a lot on and worked very very hard on um, and I still am I've still got a hell of a lot to go because I don't think I'm anywhere near there yet but I think definitely the strength and conditioning side of it is so important in football because everyone's an athlete now and you know, I've learned a lot, but I more rely on the side of my, my strengths of probably reading the game. Um, being so into football, I've always loved about reading the game. And, you know, my brain's just football, football, football. As my missus would say, if she was on here, she'd say, I get home from football and the football's on again. So it's 24-7 <laughs> football here. So, yeah. What and sort of that, that's, that was my next point, because mentioning about improving all the time, I think, are you a big believer in that if you think you've made it, that you're probably on a bit of a downhill to success? Because, I, it, mate, you need to give yourself credit because you obviously, you played, what was it, I think it was uh, nearly 20, 20 plus times now for Gibraltar, full internationals against some absolutely unbelievable players like Virgil van Dijk and some of these boys. And you, you, you just made your first team debut for Blackburn Rovers, but, how, but you always need to keep yourself grounded. That's one thing which I thought... TJ did really well. Knowing TJ from from really really young, mm. he as he's got more professional, he's almost matured a lot. And I think uh, for sure you're you're definitely along those same lines because as you sort of got more professional, and you, you signed your new deal, which obviously um, a few sort of was it six or seven or eight months ago now, I think it was only a year ago now. Um, like you said, you, you've, you've noticed that you needed to work on your biggest weakness, and and you're still going to work on it, no? Yeah, for sure. I think. Um... I still work on it all the time, just, you know, I mean, I don't want to go into details. Obviously, you'd know the no. details, but the listeners yeah. won't. But, you know, the just the, the de small details of making yourself quicker, faster, jump higher, stronger, um, core work. It, it's the fundamentals. And, yeah, I'm going to keep on doing them, obviously, to the best of my ability and keep doing them as much as I can. Well, you got the, the the opportunity that you've got at the moment definitely sort of provides that for you in a certain way. Is it? Do you almost look at it as if like, oh, I'm not going to waste this opportunity here? Yeah, I think, like I said before, I'm I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity Blackburn gave me when no one else no one else was doing that. Um, you know, I've had three and a half years now. I mean, three and a half years is a long time to wait for a debut. Um, but persistence, know, yeah, persistence, persistence yeah. pays off for yeah, sure. I didn't go away. I was like a little fly. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, yeah, it was a proud night because obviously it's all that I'd worked for, like we said then, all those sessions, all those training sessions, 21s matches, eight under-18 matches when I first joined, you know, that all those games, they built up until I felt like I was ready before, but the first team manager thought I was ready then. And that's when, you know, I had to prove that I was ready to him. And I thought that in the, on the day I did all right, I did well. And I thought he was happy. And then the main, main objective was always in winning, isn't it? So uh, to get that was extremely good. Unbelievable block off the line, by the way. I've watched it about three or four times now. It's absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I'd say I was a bit lucky myself, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mate, it's, it was 2-1 at the end of the day, mate. It, yeah. You guys went through and they went out, mate. That's, that's all I'm at. Um, so moving, moving back onto Gibraltar for a little bit, because 
now, obviously, working with with your football now, I, I see the ins and outs of how hard these guys work now. And obviously, knowing obviously you're over there, it's exactly the same thing. Mm. As you progressed along the ranks and as you burnt your caps, can have you seen that sort of professionalism increase to when we're playing guys like Arla, Harland, guys like Martin Odegaard, guys like Virgil Van Dijk, Memphis Depay, and all these guys? Definitely, and I think you know the, I think the results are showing, and the milestones we're hitting in the last three, four years are proving that, you know, it's becoming a lot more professional. And I mean, yeah, the milestones we're hitting talk for themselves, really. You know, we're writing ourselves in history all the time. And um, I think it's unbelievable what's going, what's happening in the minute. You know, the manager has a lot of faith in the youngsters. And obviously, we're all extremely grateful for that. And, you know, he, the way he loves football is just unbelievable. I thought I love football. And then I meet Julio Ribas, who lives football and breathes it. And it's... It's breathtaking to see, to be honest, because he's he's so unbelievable and inspirational that he literally we all look at him and listen to him like he's the football god, and you know he's unbelievable. To be fair, what he's done for football in Gibraltar and what he's doing at the moment, so we're all we're all obviously grateful and um, we love working under him. I think I I learned a hell of a lot from I've never met Julio in my life, but I've learned a lot from him from what some of his uh, staff have said because. I saw him once watching a game, and then I saw him watching another game, and it was the the lowest like sort of ranked game on paper. But then I, I found out later on that he would literally watch every single Premier League game and every single under twenty three game. He'll have his same spot in the stands, and he'll sit there and he'll watch it. And then I was like, that is, I've got a found, newfound respect for how hard someone works, and and it shows when the youngsters get called up because it probably gives them a bit more motivation to be like, oh, I've better sort of take this as seriously as playing against the top team because you know he's watching and nations can be sort of like this and i can show what i've got at the end of the day yeah i'm not surprised he does that so i think you know it's probably good as well that you know he literally sees everyone in Gibraltar. so he mm. he's picking his squad off he he has no excuse to him to who he picks because he's watching everyone do you know what i mean so i'm not surprised and i think that's another positive you know that you're always in his eye line so you, every game you play has got to be your best because he's watching and that's how you're going to get picked really isn't it so I think that's yeah it's one of his many characteristics that makes him into the manager is and and what what about for yourself and and I'm going to say this with confidence because you've established yourself as one of the starters on on almost every team sheet and um you know obviously barring obviously injury touch wood that doesn't happen would um so basically what I'm trying to get is for you, how sort of much do you take from a Gibraltar um, sort of trip versus sort of uh, a first team debut for Blackburn and across to one another in terms of right? I learnt this from Gibraltar, or I learnt this from Julio versus I learnt this from a gaffer at Blackburn, or from a debut. Um, I think they're very different. Obviously, yeah. I think they're very very different just due to the fact that obviously I spend a lot of time at Blackburn and uh, spend every day obviously with the managers, coaches at Blackburn. But I think it's a lot more special when you go away with the national team just due to the fact that it's your national team, it's your home, family. Um, you're making people proud. So like my grandparents who are Gibraltarian, they're extremely proud of what I'm doing. And um, I hope long may it continue that I make them proud. Um, obviously, it varies as, the, you know, Gibraltar as well is every, I don't know, I mean, to be fair, sometimes we're away three times in three months, but then might not see the boys for three or four months and then you link up again and it's I think when you go back to the international camps it's so much like you haven't seen people in a while so you're catching up but then it's also work time you know it's the balance is right and yeah I really enjoy going away obviously for me it's it's brilliant and love it you'll definitely be making them proud mate I'm 100 percent sure of that so what what for you do you do to switch off? Because you mentioned balance there, and, and balance is a big thing that I'm advocate for. And, and you mentioned that your missus is absolutely jumping your ears off to get the football off. Um, I, have the, I have the exact same with the cricket. Mate. It's absolutely it's, fr it's frustrating itself for everyone else, but it's got to be done. What for, what for you do you do to switch off? This is the thing with me, really. I think switching off for me is like my switching off is watching the football or playing FIFA, which all in all is probably football. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, there's not a lot of switch. The off switch isn't really on. Uh, the only thing I'd probably say I do to switch off is probably a Nando's. A lot of the people know that know me well. Is, Nando's, yeah, mate. exactly. Can't yeah. go wrong. Can't, can't take, go wrong. Can't take it out of the boy. Do you know what I mean? It's been it's been me since I was about twelve. 
<laughs> I literally had one last night, so I can't even sit here and say I don't go anymore. <laughs> That's brilliant, mate. No, but I suppose to a certain extent, it's so it's so it's brilliant that you don't you don't switch off because, like you said, you linking that in with the opportunity that you got. I would almost feel like I'm not thinking about it enough in a certain way, no? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't really have that because my mind is twenty four seven, and even when I'm not at football, I'm thinking of not what's happening tomorrow, but you know, especially when you're looking for a loan or you're looking for a move, you're looking at everything. I'm looking on Twitter at where he's gone, where someone else is. I'm looking at this, you know, the whole. Football brain just doesn't ever switch off, really. Even when I'm going to sleep, it's on. It's you know, it's it's just non-stop. But um, I wouldn't do that if I didn't love it, you know. So I wouldn't change it. That's really. one. That's one thing which so many people mention is the fact that the 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 mere fact of when you're competing and even whether you're you're sort of playing well or you're not playing well or you've had a bad game, you've not had a bad game. You you kind of sort of love to enjoy it, and as soon as soon as you almost stop loving it, it's probably a certain time you turn aw- turn away, no, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, hopefully that, that takes a long while for me. And I hope I'm yeah. not using up all the football brain now. But um, yeah. I think, yeah, like you said then, obviously, I'm not going to stop until... And I think at the moment, I'm in the mindset of when I do stop playing, I want to go into coaching or managerial jobs. So, you know, I've almost got my plan set out for the next 15 years, 20 years of football, 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 which is what I've been brought up in and, yeah, how I really want to live life, I suppose. Louis Annesley, the future gaffer or the future Julio Rivas? <laughs> I'd be different, I'll tell you, I'd be different, but I would have he loves it, obviously, he goes to all the games, oh. but yeah, I would love to, love to get into something like that. I think by the time you finish, mate, I don't think you'll be one of watching every single game, mate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but alright, get the footballs away, mate, get the footballs away. Um, so obviously, just before we sort of close off, mate, because obviously it's been, it's been 35 minutes now, and it's felt like five minutes, um, so... What what's next for you now? Because obviously it's it's a brilliant bit of momentum that you've got now, and I'm a big fan of using momentum in a positive direction. So what's next for you? Sort of in the next again, we think very presently, but like you said, you do set your goals at the start of the season. So so what's your what's coming up next for you? So again, I'd say obviously I think it's four days of the transfer window left. Um, so we'll see. The next four days are quite big for me to see what happens in those four days, and hopefully something um, good happens. If something does happen, then, you know, the targets are the targets I've set a few weeks ago or three months ago whenever pre-season started, which would probably be the same, you know, 30, 35 league games. Hopefully I'm at a club where pushing for promotion. I'd love to have something like that on my CV, you know, like Scott Wiseman has, for example, um, where you're winning league titles because at the end of the day, winning is most important. And if you can have those milestones in your CV, I think they speak for themselves. You know, you're, you're a winner. And I think that's what people look for in teams. What an attitude to have. What what for you is the, do you know sort of when you, when you want to go out on loan? Because you mentioned the, and, and I'm going to diverge off topic very quickly, um, for you that you know you want to go out on loan because it, it's a big decision to make based on the fact that that what's just happened, but you've got to use it in the right direction because you know that you go away, you play well, and you're going to get more opportunities when you come back. Yeah, I think you've got to be very, I think this is where people sometimes go wrong with the profession they're in, is that you've got to be You've got to have goals. And I think the goals are really important, but you've got to be really realistic with the goals. Um, I had a good game Tuesday, but you know, I'm not going to play week in, week out in the championship just yet. I think you know, obviously, the gaffer wants experienced heads and and pit players who have done it and a certain type of player. And I think maybe that's not me at the moment, but I think with a loan or a you know a move away to become that player, you could then come back and and be that player that he wants to slot in and trust. I think trust is really important with that. And I think you've got to play a lot of games to gain that trust. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why a loan would be very important to me. Awesome. And fingers crossed it's all in the right direction. And I'm sure it will be. Um, so so for you, the uh, final couple of questions that I've got for your first couple of points, not on interview, it's mm. not on, uh, you're not on GBC, you're not on Sky News. <laughs> um, Anyone who's sort of any one person or whether it be in football or without football, that's kind of influenced you in your journey. And, and I've got a bit of an idea, um, but like, I want to hear it from, from yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say my grandfather. Um, you yeah. know, without him, I probably wouldn't have got into football. I probably wouldn't have got to where I am today. Um, you know, he drove me everywhere. And I think a lot of people probably say that, but, you know, the trips every Sunday, the Tuesday, the Thursday, 
they're going to Bristol, they're going to Swansea, they're going to here, there and everywhere. You know, they was part of every single journey, the Blackburn, you know, he drove me to Blackburn. And, you know, I think now is just about really proving him right. And I think that's probably on my journey where now I do everything with him and for him. And um, even though we wanted to do it together, I've now got to take that and do it myself. And, you know, I think with his trust that he gave me and the belief he had for me, I've got to have that belief in myself now. Mate, he's bloody proud of you. That's that's one hundred and ten percent sure. I have no doubt about that. So, um, that, then, what what one piece of advice that you would give to anyone who wants to be the next Louis Annesley, the next professional football player, uh, or the next international football player, whether that's for Gibraltar or or sort of anywhere? Else? Just going off the last point, I'd probably say that you have to believe in yourself. I don't think I think in everything in life that you do, whether it's football, another sport, rugby, cricket, I think the main thing is believing in yourself because. One man's opinion can't make your future. And that's that's a fact because, as TJ said in his, and I know a lot of other players in Jib will probably have been told they're not the level or they're not good enough for this. But that's just someone's opinion. And I think you've got to take it with a pinch of salt and keep working on yourself. And I think you'll get to where you want to be one day with that. What a way to finish, ladies and gents. What a way to finish that is. And, and team, this has been a long time in the making. And bloody hell it was worth it so definitely <laughs> thank you so much for coming on Lou um, mate your, your time is extremely valuable as uh, everyone is probably aware he's, he's got a couple of bits to do um, but no thanks so much for coming on Lou thank you very much for having me mate appreciate it no worries thanks for listening guys ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for listening to that episode of the Fitzcammy podcast oh my word that is up there with TJ's episode how unbelievable um, was that to, to hear from Lou he obviously another professional footballer on the podcast and again levels up um again like i mentioned on the podcast it wasn't just because louis was there as he's got more professional he's just got that much more humble that much more mature and that much more of a nicer bloke so um lou if you're watching it thank you so much for coming on um and giving me your time i've been absolutely badgering in, in uh, <laughs> on the instagram messages for so long um but that's because obviously i just i wanted to hear so much about his journey obviously um playing for the Gibraltar national team coming to play for Gibraltar for a little uh, in Gibraltar for a little bit and then obviously going back and playing for blackburn rovers and making his debut the other day which was really really proud for for all of us in Gibraltar to see um and can't wait to to see him his name on on more of those team sheets in the near future we wish him the best of luck um for the rest of the season and we'll be looking on for sure uh, so please go and head down and uh, follow him on instagram follow him on, on all his social medias i'll link them all there and uh, please do also like this video and share it if you felt that you as a footballer um took something out of it if you learned something even if you're not a footballer if you felt that you learned something from louis please do share it to your friends and family to to listen to obviously we'll be leaving the the little video as a little spoiler so please do share that one as well it helps out a hell of a lot and we'll see you next sunday for another episode of the fitz Academy podcast team take care